It's time to talk about one of my favorite spots on the team as we finish up our positional previews. Maybe the best spot on the team. We'll get to that and more in today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, my friends? I am Ryan Herrings, your host, of Locked On Badgers. We are here to cover your team every single day. And I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Really, really do appreciate however you found us. If you're listening on the pod, um, welcome. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a little chaos in my office as I'm moving offices, but welcome nonetheless. Really, really, really do appreciate you making this one of your first stops. We're gearing up the seasons right around the corner. Very, very excited for it. Let's get it. No more wasted time. Uh, finish up our positional previews, and I teased it. One of the best spots on the team we're going to talk about today, we're talking linebackers. Um, we're talking the totality of the group, outside and inside. And, um, yeah, it is it is loaded with young talent. Let's start on the outside. All right, let's start where the biggest star in this constellation is for the Badgers, and that's Nick Herbig. Herbig is – enjoy him, Badger fans. He's a junior, but he he might as well be a senior because barring injury – and which we would obviously be devastated to see happen. Um, yeah, he's gone. Like he's, he's, he's an NFL dude and he's going to play his last season this year in Madison. And then he's going to have the opportunity. I shouldn't speak for him, right? He can certainly come back to Madison if he wants to, but he's going to have the opportunity to be a very high NFL draft pick. And most people in that situation, rightfully so, make the decision to go start making lots and lots of money and secure their financial future. So he's a star, right? He's, you know, and, and the Herbig's unique because you know, he's, he's a guy who who plays much bigger than his size. He has a great feel for angles, getting to the edges. You know, he's not the longest. You look at some of the outside linebackers that have starred in this defense. You know, the guys like TJ Watt, Van Ginkle, Leon Jacobs. You know, all these players are either bigger in, like, Jacobs' case, or much longer physically and taller, like the the Watts and the Van Ginkles, right? And Herbig's not really like that. He doesn't also doesn't have uh, like a guy like Zach Bonds insane first step off the line of scrimmage. You know, he's much more of a relentless player. Um, not not saying obviously, listen, TJ Watt or eight um TJ Watt was as well, you know, but he is a relentless um uh, player. He great around the edges, right? Uh, understands angles really, really well, accelerates very quickly, um, gets to the spot, very few false steps. He's a heavy hitter. He really brings a pop when he hits, you know, so a uh, great player, total star. Uh, again, last year in Madison, enjoy him. Let's go to the other side. The other outside linebacker spot is going to start the season is CJ Getz. And Getz is just the next in kind of that Garrett Dooley production line, right? Like you have the star rolling off the, the production line in Nick Herbig, right? The Ferrari production line. And then, you know, Getz is kind of like the Ford. F-150 production line, right? And it's just a different type of dude. Been around the program for a long time. He's a senior, a very solid, good player. A- athletic enough, he, but he's going to be your set the set the edge guy, right? His his role in this defense, again, functionally is similar to the Garrett, Garrett Dooley types where their job is to help you get to second and long, right? Their job is to help you get to third and long. Because once that happens, you know, Getz is, is come off the field. Right. And and the pass rush package comes in. And that's where he gets really excited for Badger fans. Cause let's talk about the next names at outside linebacker, right? Let's talk about who's coming in on second and eleven, on third and six. It's Daryl Peterson, you know, um, part of that 2021 class with TJ Bowlers as well. Peterson was a monster in high school, a pass rush edge disruptive dynamo. And the coaching staff really likes him. They got him on the field a little bit last year in the bowl game. Big, physical, hulking presence. You know, really strong. I don't think he's quite refined yet. I mean, in fact, we've seen, you know, some some whispers about, you know, he may not be quite 100% there this year. But he's a really physical, athletic presence, you know, that impressed right away with the coaching staff. So expect to see him a ton this year. Expect to see, you know, some really nice flashes from him. That The sky is very high for uh, Daryl Peterson, even if you don't fully see it this year. And then you also have TJ Bowlers, you know, another highly regarded edge player came out of Iowa, highly recruited by a lot of programs, uh, physical, you know, there's some, there's always been some speculation. He might end up being a defensive end, but he's still an outside linebacker right now. You have Caden Johnson, who was a four-star outside linebacker prospect out of Minnesota, who has also made some nice reps in practice. He's kind of like a hybrid, you know, where he has some of the strength of a Peterson, 
and some of the the speed of, of a guy like a Herbig. So he can do a lot of different things. And then you still have Aaron Witt out there who he's, I would say he probably isn't going to play much this year. Like at some point, you know, lower leg injuries, foot injuries are, they start to become endemic and they just start to, you just don't shake them. But if he could ever get on the field, man, the coaching staff loves him. Six five, full of anger, right? And you really have those four players, uh, four young players, Bowlers, Peterson, Caden Johnson, and Aaron Witt, all ready to come in. And you have a star in Herbig. The position is absolutely loaded. There's question marks, right? Because a lot of them haven't done it in a game outside of Herbig and Getz, but it is loaded. Um, let's talk inside linebacker now. This is really where it's interesting. Obviously, we know what's gone, right? Chanel and Sanborn. And with them goes 34 and a half tack TFLs, right? They were incredible last year. And no surprise if they both continue to their, you know, continue to do really well in their NFL careers because they're ballers. They're both just total ballers. How do you replace that? Who's going to do it? Well, the answer to the first question is you don't, right? You, you don't replace those two dudes. Like the inside linebacker spot is going to be worse this year, no matter who you put in there. It just is. You're not instantly replacing two NFL players. But I think it's going to be Jordan Turner and Jake Cheney. That's my that's my read on it. There's four players battling for this, right? It's Tatum Grass, who played a lot last year. Jordan Turner, who's an athletic, probably one of the most athletic linebackers on the team. Certainly one of the most athletic inside linebackers the team has had in a long time. You have um, Nanja Mehta, who has been on the roster for a couple years now. He came in with a lot of high praise, kind of an underrated inside linebacker recruit. Um, a lot of injuries. It sounds like he's healthy, flashing some of the athleticism that caused people to take notice at first. And then you have Jake Cheney, you know, coach's son came in last year. Again, he's a player that the coaching staff didn't redshirt. You know, they found a way to get him on the field. And that usually, you usually read tea leaves with that. That usually means they see something there, right? So the fact that he didn't redshirt is kind of open. Uh, he's a coach's son. All the same vibes you got from a Chris Orr type, you know, a little undersized, but a plugger, a baller, always around the football, tenacious. Like you're getting those same vibes from Cheney. And maybe he doesn't start. I think by the end of the year, he's going to be one of the top two dudes. And I think Turner's just too athletic to keep off the field. But expect a rotation here, right? Expect to see all four of these players rotate through. And quite frankly, we, we've heard that Brian Sanborn's getting in the mix as well. You know, the four-star linebacker, the younger brother of Jack Sanborn. So this is another position that's loaded. And behind them, if you're looking forward, you have Aiden Vaughn and Jack Ratzlaff, two young players. Ratzlaff was a four-star kid out of Minnesota. Aiden Vaughn was a late commit. But really, really athletic. Okay. Really athletic. They like him a lot. So there's a lot of depth at this position as well. I would expect to see Turner and Cheney a lot this year. And certainly by the end of the year, I think those are the top two. But you're going to see all four of those top players at inside linebacker. That's it. I mean, that's that's the position. You know, um, I think that it's it's unique in that. I want to get into it in the next segment a little bit with, with best case, worst case, but I want to finish here. I think it's a little unique that, you know, the Badgers are replacing really have so many question marks on paper at linebacker, right? Two new starters. We don't really know if gets is the impact player. We've never really seen her big shoulder to load. And yet I still feel really good about it. It's just a little, it's a little interesting. Um, some of this just benefit the doubt with the way the Badgers coaching staff has recruited and built these players up. But, we're going to talk best case, worst case, next scenario. I'm going to tell you why this, this entire unit could, could fall apart. So that's coming up next. But first, a message from the National Highway Transport Safety Administration. Are you one of those people who thinks it's okay to drive stoned? What's the worst that could happen? You end up driving below the speed limit. No big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is your reaction time slow way down when you're high. You can not only put yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Talk about a buzzkill. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. And if you drive impacted, if you drive high, you get a DUI. All right, everyone. Thank you again for making this one of your first listens every day. Really, really do appreciate it as we build this community. Um, I'm so excited, right? It's game week. We're going to be vibing all week. I'm going to try to drop extra content. Let's go. Let's talk best case, worst case linebackers, right? And I just got done telling you the linebackers are great. They got a star. They got veterans. They got young cats that already explode. They got four bodies in the middle. What's the problem? Well, 
couple things really like and again with best case worst case i always try to leave out injuries right so we're not talking herbig gets hurt and and you know that kind of stuff because yeah that would sink the that would sink the outside linebackers if they lose herbig for a significant portion of time but the worst case is there is now all the focus on herbig right and he last year really had the benefit of playing off a, a Matt Henningsen. He had the benefit of playing off a Leo Chanel, a Jack Sanborn. He was not the first option for opposing offenses to really shift protection, to chip, to double, right? To to roll out going the opposite way. How is Herbie going to handle that this year? We don't know. Now, every intangible intangible box you can think of, Herbie checks. Okay. So I have no, I have no real concerns. Even if we're trying to take a pessimistic look here, I have no real concerns that Herbig is going to get frustrated and stop grinding, or you know, not find a way to impact the game. But there's a very real possibility. Again, if we're saying worst case, there's a very real possibility that opposing defenses find ways to game plan him out of impacting as much of the of the action, right? Either that's, you know, chipping with a back a lot, that's double teaming, that's sliding protection. You know, maybe they roll the, the quarterback out a different way, or maybe they run right at him, right? That's the other thing with Herbig is he's stronger than he looks, right? Herbig packs a punch. He is not, you can't bully ball him, but his strength is not point of attack, right? You can, with just physical, you can probably wear on him a little bit. So, you know, let's say that happens. Let's say opposing offenses really game plan away Nick Herbig. And then, you know, everyone else is kind of a question mark, right? And that's where the worst case potentially comes up. You have new coaches, right? Uh, they, you know, obviously Bill Sheridan came in for like three weeks. He's gone already. They, they lost him due to some of the NCAA shenanigans, something he did or didn't do while he was a, a member of the Air Force coaching staff. So now you have Dan D'Onofrio coming in. Um, been out of the coaching business for a long time, right? He has not coached in several years. Now, I personally like the hire. If you went back to my reaction to that, I, uh, with his former defensive coordinator experience in recruiting guys and areas, I think it's going to be really good for Jim Leonard to, to be able to lean on him to, to get some, you know, some input, some feedback, some higher level discussions. But we don't really know how he's going to handle this group. And again, we just got done talking about it. We don't even know who the inside linebacker starters are. Now, I like the bodies there, but they're not proven, Okay. I like Getz, but Getz isn't a difference maker. Let's say Daryl Peterson, those young cats are a year away. Opposing teams game plan to take Herbig away. And the middle inside linebacker spot with new co or the new coach is just kind of in flux and then nothing ever, you know, clicks or gels. That's the worst case. And listen, that's not that's not impossible, right? I don't I don't think that'll happen, but that's not if you if at the end of the season, you know, that someone writes up the synopsis and they say, Yeah, inside linebackers never gelled. Maybe it's a coaching thing. Getz is just a dude and opposing offense is really double teamed Herbig. Okay. Yeah, I could buy that. You know, I really could. So I think that's worse. Oh, I'll give you one more too. People, we, we, as fans, um, we tend to fall into the trap of it'll always keep, if, if it's been happening for a while, it'll always keep happening. And eventually that, that stream always runs out of water, right? You know, so we kind of have fallen into this trap that Wisconsin linebackers are always good. I shouldn't say trap. That's just what's happened. Wisconsin linebackers are always good. Jim Leonard will always figure it out. You know, there used to be, I'm, I'm always um, in baseball, I'm an Atlanta Braves fan. You know, don't ask why, and it's not for this podcast. But, you know, there was a time when people said the Braves will win the division every year because they always do. And they always have great pitching until they didn't, right? And then they missed the playoffs like eight straight years. So there will be a year when the linebackers aren't good, when, when the defense falls off. Like, you know, just because it's been really good for a long time, that doesn't mean it's going to be good this year. You know, it it, it is a trend line and it gives you uh, valid reasons to be optimistic. But, you know, you have to look for actual tangible reasons why it's going to be good, not just it's been good in the past. So. That's my that's my worst case pessimistic. Let's talk let's talk optimistic. Let's let's chop it up on the happy side of this. So what's the best case, right? Best case, realistic. Nick Herbig is an All American, and and that's super realistic. You know, All American teams are hard to get, but he could absolutely have that type of season, and that's best case. You know, he is going no matter what he's going to face more tension, but you know he is also a star outside linebacker. Period. End of discussion star period and he's going to get 12 and a half sacks 13 sacks he's going to be incredibly disruptive he's going to wreck game plans and he's going to open up this is the flip side of it right the downside is he's going to get a lot more attention 
the upside is he's going to open things up for other players. Now you're going to have Daryl Peterson one-on-one. You're going to have the inside linebackers one-on-one. And I think best case here is Jordan Turner is an athletic freak. He showed crazy playmaking ability and limited reps last year. That continues to blossom. He becomes your next star inside linebacker with really a level of range we haven't seen in Madison, right? For all the great inside linebackers we have, we've had, you know, incredible players, right? Edwards and obviously the two last year and, and or and Conley and Sitchi, I mean, just Borland and on and on and on and on, right? It's incredible for all the dudes we've had. Turner is a different type of athlete. Now, I'm not saying a better player, but a different type of athlete. You can see it on field. You can not even really watch football and you see him run around out there like, wow, he's faster than everyone else, you know? So best case is he's a star, right? And we start to see that this year. And then whoever they put in alongside of him is just a solid player. CJ gets is solid. And then continuing best case, listen, you have two or three other ready prospects at outside linebackers. So best case is two or three of those guys, one or two pop. They're ready. I think it's Daryl Peterson, TJ Bowlers, Caden Johnson, Aaron Witt, potentially if he gets healthy. But that's the best case, right? Herbig's a star. Um, Turner is the athletic freak show dynamo that gives you a game-changing presence in the middle of the field um, against passing games, right? Against when teams spread you out. I think Turner can play in space with his athleticism. And then you have a solid player, whether it's Tatum Grass, um, Chaney, you know, Nam Jameda, whoever that is at the other inside linebacker spot. You also have really good depth there with those four. And then the young guys, and I think it's going to be P- Daryl Peterson. One of those guys really steps up in passing situations, chips in six, you know, five, four sacks, somewhere in that range where he's impactful. I think that's your best case. And I think if that happens, that's one of the best linebacking cores in the Big Ten for sure. Um, which way would I lean? Best case, worst case? I think it's much more realistic on this one to lean best case. I I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you can always, and I said this about defensive line too, a spot that I still think people are too low on. Uh, at the end of the day, if you can anchor your your positional unit with a bona fide, proven team leader slash star, this the floor is so high, right? And and that's Herbie. That was that's Keanu Benton on the defensive line. And there's not a lot of spots on this Wisconsin team that you can definitively say that with. I mean, I don't think you can say it. You certainly can't at tight end. I don't think you'd say it in the secondary. I don't think you can even say it on the offensive line necessarily. Um, quarterback probably not. Probably running back, obviously running back. Uh, but maybe it's just running back, defensive line, and linebackers, right? But Herbig is a star. And when you can anchor your team to – or your position to a star, it just makes everything else easier to buy into. So I'm going to lean more best case, which is Herbig, you know, anchoring this unit, the young cats coming up, and Turner having a breakout season. Uh, coming up next on Lockdown Badgers, we are going to talk grades. How do I grade this unit for this year? How do I grade it looking two, three, four years down – down the road, just checking out the pipeline, who we're recruiting. You know, um, we're going to get into that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a word from our sponsors. I want to thank everybody for making Lockdown Badgers one of your first listens, your team every single day. I do have a quick favor to ask everybody. If you're enjoying the show, um, please support if you can. I just realized Michigan State has like twice the subscribers as we do on YouTube. We are a better fan base than Michigan State. I'm going to ask you just really quick. I never do this. Uh, but take a sec, subscribe to the show if you enjoy the content. We're going to keep it coming, and let's catch up to Michigan State. We can definitely do it, um, and uh, we're here just to build the community, catch up to uh, – the, let's catch up to Sparty. Um, going forward, let's talk about uh, grades, right? Grades for the season, grades going forward. We're going to start a uh, linebacker grade for this season. I'm going to I'm gonna break the grades up, outside linebacker, inside linebacker, Okay. And I think that's fair. I didn't want to do two preview shows because I didn't think we needed to break up two entire shows. But I think for the grades, it makes sense to break it up because they are kind of two distinct positions, right? Two different coaches. Um, So outside linebacker for this season, uh, I think it's B+. I think I'm going to go B+, which is a really good grade. And again, so much of that is anchored to the fact that I know there's a star there. Like I know I have an ace in the hand. And I think the depth around him is enough to to uh, opposing offenses aren't going to be able to just focus on him. Like Getz is a really solid player. He's a really physical, uh, better at, I think he's a better athlete than Dooley too. Like he's not a stiff out there. You know, he is not a stiff out there. Like he's, I think he's a, I'm trying to think of 
maybe not. I mean, Dooley wasn't a bad athlete either. I'm, I'm thinking about this in my head now. You know, Noah Burks is another one that's been in those spots. You know, but but Getz is a good player. You know, a player that would start on a lot of teams. And then coming in behind him, you just have those that that troika, right? That ferocious trio of Peterson, Bowlers, and um, Caden Johnson. And and I'm giving them monikers that they haven't earned yet, right? We don't actually know if that's going to be ferocious, but the high school film, the pedigree, what the coaches have kind of said, whispers we've heard, I think they're going to be really good. So I'm going to go B plus there. Inside linebacker, I'm going to go C. I, I think I'm going to go C. For this year. Yeah, I just think there's going to be a lot of learning curve there and a lot of growing pains. Now, I think they're going to be fine. C is average, right? I certainly don't think it's going to be a black hole. I think early in the year, it could be a little worse and it could get better and this year goes on. And by the way, if, if Turner is ready and he utilizes all those physical tools that we talked about and, you know, Cheney, that coach's son, is playing above his years, this, this grade by the end of the year could easily be uh, a B, you know, an easy B if, if those players kind of turn out. If, if Nanja Mehta is finally fully healthy and ready to take advantage of that spot, Tatum Grass is another one too, not to get lost in the shuffle. So, you know, actually I'm going to bump it up already at C+. I'm talking myself into it. Nothing wrong with that. You know, just just on the basis of you have four bodies, the depth there is really good. You know, a lot of teams don't have four ready inside linebackers in the Big Ten. So I'm going to say C+. And it's C plus really based on the idea that we don't fully know what we're going to get from any of these players, right? From any of them. We have high hopes. Uh, we obviously, I think they're going to be really solid, but again, you got to see it, right? There's nobody there like a Herbie that you can really hit your wagon into. So I'm going to say, uh, excuse me, C, C plus for the inside linebackers this year. Let's look going forward now, now down the road, outside linebackers. A, I think it's a straight A. You know, and that's that's knowing we're going to lose Herbig, but they've recruited the position so well, so well. I mean, it's super easy to look a year, two years down the road, and you, you're picturing uh, Daryl Peterson and you know TJ Bowlers as your outside linebackers with guys like Caden Johnson, Aaron Witt backing them up. I just I think they've recruited that spot so so well, so well. Um, and all those players, you know, it's it's another one of those things too where. The, you got to trust Bobby April at this point, too. And that, that's kind of part of this grade. Bobby April develops these players so, so well. And you have a lot of faith in his ability to continue recruiting. So I think that pipeline is going to continue to get stocked. I think these players are going to continue to develop. We didn't even really talk about Isaac Ham, another four-star outside linebacker that has been working through a few academic issues, but he should be on the roster. He's another you know big-time recruiting player, another big-time athlete on the edge coming down the pike. So yeah, looking forward, you just have studs upon stud potential. It's all potential, but that's what looking forward is, right? You're looking into, if you're a baseball fan, single A and seeing a bunch of pitchers that throw 97. They may not make it, but the potential's there. The projection is there. So you see two, three, four, five potential studs come down the pipeline. Knowing that Bobby a April is going to be the one coaching them, yeah, that's an A. Easy A. Inside linebacker. Another, gosh, I'm so high on them, man. I, I got to be honest. I'm going A-. minus. I, I really, and it's mostly just because I don't have Bobby Abreu coaching this group, but I think the young players in this group, uh, you know, Brian Sanborn uh, is already fighting for a two deep spot. He's a four-star player. We already know the football instincts in that family run deep. I love Chaney. I love Chaney, the coach's son, you know, and then uh, obviously you still, you have Turner for a couple of years too, and he's just so athletic. So um, yeah, I think that's another A8. A minus. Oh, by the way, the the other two players that we didn't even really talk about in this preview, you know, Jake Ratzlaff and um, sorry, the name is name's Lucy, um Aiden Vaughn. Those two are really highly regarded youngsters on the inside. And then you have Tyler Jancy from the 2023 cycle, who's probably going to be another inside player. And he's blowing up. His film is great, by the way. He is super underrated, kid out of Illinois. So I think the future is incredibly bright at both spots. You know, let me know. Comment below. Let me know if you think I'm off base. Uh, you know, but I think there are just studs upon studs at these spots. I think that Padres know how to find them. They know how to coach them up, especially Bobby April. We'll have to see with the inside linebackers. But there is a lot of of, of potential in this in both of these rooms. You know, and I have a lot of faith in the Badgers to get the most out of those, just based on what we've seen the track records there. So, yeah, that's my grades. I'm going B plus outside linebacker for this year c plus inside linebacker again mostly just based on we don't know what the other guys are going to do 
Going forward in the future, I have A outside linebacker and A minus inside linebacker. I think the position is absolutely stocked. That's it, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Really, really do appreciate it. If you can support the show, please leave a like, comment, subscribe again. Let's catch Michigan State. They have, they have a lot more subscribers than we do, and I know our fan base is better. Let's get them. Um, aside from that, go check out Locked On Big Ten. Nate Dickinson takes you all around the Big Ten. What are our rivals up to? Football season is here. We are just a couple days away, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, and let's go get it on Wisconsin. We'll talk tomorrow.